The Grand Chess Tour tournament in Leuven, Belgium, came to a dramatic climax. Going to the final round, Wesley So still held a slim lead in the overall standings, but he was being chased by Sergei Kayakin and Maxime Vachier Le Grave, who were doing very well in the Blitz tournament. So, crucial last round. Wesley So had black against Hikaru Nakamura, of course, a Blitz specialist who was also having a good Blitz tournament. And they reached this position after 40 moves. It, it, it had been a game with lots of ups and downs. At this moment, it looks as though Nakamura is, is starting to consolidate his extra pawn. You can see one full pass pawn on d6. But there is one thing in black's favour in this position. King position. Black's king has the protection of these pawns. White's king, well, it has the protection of pieces, but the pawns have flown up the board. Well, for good reason. But in a blitz game, that can be crucial. Of course, objectively, white should be winning this position. But in blitz, those factors really play a great role. And of course, time was a big factor. Wesley So had a time advantage. He's had something like 40 or 50 seconds remaining on his clock at this moment, whereas Nakamura had something like, well, from memory, it was something like 15 seconds. Now, they were playing with a delay, nevertheless, pressure on Nakamura in that respect. Wesley played bishop c6, attacking the pawn here. Of course, Hikaru advances, forming a beautiful pawn chain. And it looks like things are going White's way at this moment. Of course, you want to trade when you're a pawn up and just, yeah, to clarify the situation. And here is a really important moment, actually. I think if uh, Nakamura played knight d4, with the idea of just bringing that knight back after the trade to give his king a little bit more protection, then things would have been pretty much plain sailing for white, actually, or certainly a lot easier for white to play in blitz. But queen c3 is a very understandable move in a blitz game. If white trades queens, then it's a completely winning endgame. Not only completely winning objectively, but so much easier for white to play when he doesn't have to worry about his queen. But, of course, Wesley avoids the queen trade and attacks along the second rank. And this variation underlines how suddenly how tricky this position is. If bishop takes bishop, then the queen swoops in and that lack of pawn cover really tells because suddenly the queen is joined by the bishop uh, threatening queen g1 mate and actually this is a winning position for black. Therefore uh, Nakamura dropped back with the king to protect the knight and then came a check and the king came up. Now at this moment an extraordinary turn of events the players were thumping their clocks like mad, but you know, th this is kind of normal when you only have seconds on the clock. Uh, you know, you're just desperate to, to, to stop your clock, to, to move on. The arbiters stepped in and told both players that they were hitting the clock too powerfully, too strongly, um, and that they were disturbing the other players. I mean, both uh, Wesley and Hikaru were astounded. They couldn't believe it. They, you know, they weren't bothered at all. This is just normal in a blitz game when you get right down to the wire. Um, and it was a very odd thing to do. It has to be said, you know, I was watching this and it, of course it breaks the spell. It breaks the concentration. Um, I think they were being a, a bit oversensitive. Certainly, as I said, the players weren't bothered at all. Uh, and they were completely thrown by this. Well, for the next couple of moves, Wesley played very well. Uh, it didn't affect him immediately. Played queen d1. Once again, there's a threat to play queen takes knight. Now the knight is able to move. 
So has he blown it? He could, on, sorry, on that last move, of course, he could have repeated the position with queen a2. But he goes for it like this. And in fact, this is absolutely correct. After bishop b6, this bishop joins the fray and now white is in some trouble. White can still hold if he finds this tricky move, king h2. Um, and then it should be a draw after this with perpetual check. Of course, at this moment, Wesley didn't know whether a draw would be enough. Let's go back to this position. But instead of king h2, uh, Nakamura played bishop takes bishop. And after bishop takes, suddenly things are turning black's way. This is incredible. Uh, for example, if queen c8 check, then there, there's a remarkable position. I think it's really interesting to see this, actually. Black has a winning attack in this position. So bishop h2, you know, you're wanting to, to get in here, um, perhaps first h5. Um, so bishop g2, now h5 anyway. And white is completely caught in this position. The queen has to stay on this diagonal to prevent queen g4 mate. So that rules out pushing these pawns or, or, or e6 as well, because that's just mate. The bishop has to stay on g2 to prevent queen h2 mate. So white is reduced to just shuffling in this position. Um, for ex but the problem is, okay, b4, for example. And black has a slow motion winning attack here after queen d3. And let's say bishop takes pawn and then bishop f2 and there's no defense to queen g3 and mate. Um, quite extraordinary. Well, instead of that, uh, Nakamura played queen c4. And here Wesley missed an extraordinary chance. Now in blitz, you've got seconds. You're not gonna find this, but let's have a look anyway. It really is remarkable. Queen g1 check. King comes up. Queen check and the king comes here. Well, it looks as though you're actually driving white's king to safety. And I can understand why with just seconds left you wouldn't go in for this because suddenly yeah the king seems as though it's found a very secure home and then you're just ready to push or or take here and go for a winning attack incredibly there is a slow motion checkmating attack you play king here and then king here and this sets up a couple of beautiful checkmates so the first thing is that if g5 uh, you're threatening g5 if white gets a queen to prevent g5 then you give up your queen and bishop f2 mate uh, isn't that beautiful white has two queens on the board but that is checkmate or if white prevents that um checkmate with queen takes pawn with queen f1 then as i said g5 is just mate in a slightly more prosaic way so queen g1 would have been winning for wesley instead he played h5 which sets up a mate with queen here and queen f2 but this one can be parried by h4 and after the check now the king is secure actually because the bishop controls the this crucial diagonal it's extraordinary of course wesley tried but uh, hikaru now manages to parry the threats well, he's got to watch out for this one or, or bishop h2 but in this case he manages to uh, deflect the problem with this move uh, queen c3 and the queen can always 
there's this idea of bishop here, but uh, we and queen g4 mate, but the queen can always block with queen f3, um, and that's what happened here. And now it's just a case of making sure that uh, you, you spot all the obvious threats and holding the position firm, which uh, Hikara manages to do. And now the initiative really has gone towards white. I have to say, credit to Hikaru Nakamura. You know, he was finding these defensive moves with almost nothing on his clock it was it was a brilliant performance um it's you know it's very hard to uh, realize when you just see the bare moves without seeing the clock times uh, how extraordinary white's defense was yes there was this incredible uh, spectacular checkmate that wesley had but very very difficult to see in blitz of course in this position Wesley so resigned, of course, that's that's just too much when you're a whole piece down. Remarkably, despite losing this final round game, in fact, Wesley so won the tournament. He was first in the overall standings because in that final round, Sergei Kayakin and Maxime Vachilograv both lost their games. Incredible. Um, but the overall standings in the Blitz, in just in the Blitz tournament, uh, Sergei Karyakin won it with 11 and a half, half point ahead of Hikaru Nakamura, and third was Maxime Vachelograf. If you want to see one of Sergei Karyakin's wonderful Blitz wins, then there's a nice game against Anish Giri. So do check out the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.